Chapter 8, How to Steal a Dog. I stared down at my desk, and in my head, I begged Mr. White not to call on me. Georgina, he said, how about reading us your report on volcanoes? I looked at the paper in my hand. I had made my writing real big so I could fill up a whole page like we were supposed to. Everyone else had used their computers or gone to the library, but not me. All I could do was sit in that nasty house making stuff up. With my face burning, I read my report about how volcanoes are like mountains with a hole in the middle, and then fire comes out and hot lava runs down the side. My whole report lasted about two seconds, and then it was over, and everybody laughed. I was sure I could hear Luann and Liza laughing louder than everyone else. Mr. White said, shh, and put his hand on my shoulder. Thank you, Georgina, he said, and my heart swelled up with love for him. My report was nothing but great, big, made-up words, but he was still being nice to me. He wasn't going to holler at me like he had hollered at Luke Ketchum. I hadn't been doing too good in school lately, but I still look forward to being there. At least at school, I knew how my day was going to go. I knew we'd say the Pledge of Allegiance, and then we'd raise our hands if we wanted grilled cheese instead of chicken fingers for lunch. Then we'd look up there on the chalkboard, and our whole day would be written out math, and then reading, a spelling test, and then gym, no surprises. Not like after school, when I never knew what was going to happen next. It seemed like something new was always coming my way, and most times it wasn't good. Like that very day of my volcano report, when me and Toby got back to the car and Mama was sitting there all red-faced and crying. Toby lunged right through the open window and hugged her so hard I thought she was going to he peeled his arms from around her neck and said, y'all get in the car. I got in my usual spot in the back, but Toby jumped in the front, pushing all the boxes and bags and things aside. He kept on saying, what's the matter, mama? But she wouldn't answer. <clears throat> Nobody said anything as we sped along the streets of Darby. Mama gripped the steering wheel with both hands, her knuckles white and her elbows locked stiff. When we stopped at a red light, she put her head down on the steering wheel. The light turned green and a big truck behind us honked, but Mama didn't even look up. Mama, I said, nothing. The truck horn honked again and somebody yelled. Mama, I said again. The truck roared around us and the man driving it hollered and shook his fist at us. I had a feeling something went bad was about to happen. The light's green, I said. Mama lifted her head off, up off the steering wheel and stared at the road. Another horn honked behind us. I got fired at the cleaner, she said. Can you believe that? How come, I said. Mama breathed out a big whoosh. <sighs> Who knows, she said. Because I was late once or twice, I reckon. Or because I don't use the pressing machine fast enough. Or maybe just because I'm alive. Mama's not feeling too good right now, is she? She didn't even turn her head when another car whipped around us, honking like crazy. Maybe you better get out of the road, I said. Maybe I better get out of the whole darn world, she said, and sounded so mean. She swiped at tears and wiped her nose with her hand. Maybe I better just disappear off the face of the earth. Poof, like that, she snapped her fingers. Wouldn't that be nice? I felt words bubbling up inside me till they came busting out. Yeah, I hollered. That would be nice. I kicked the back of the seat and made Mama's head jerk, but she kept staring straight ahead. Why don't you disappear? And then me and Toby can do what we want. Right, Toby? I poked the back of Toby's head, but he just rocked back and forth, sniffing. Another car horn honked, and Mama sat up straight like she had just woken up. She brushed the hair out of her eyes and started driving again. Nobody said anything as we turned down the dirt and gravel road that led to the house. The car squeaked and bounced and rattled. When we stopped, Mama turned off the engine and the car gave one last little shudder. We gathered our things and made our way through the prickly bushes to the front porch. And then we all three stopped dead in our tracks and stared at that old house. Boards had been nailed in a giant X over the front door. Someone had written on the boards in great big letters, this is private property, keep out. They had added about a million exclamation points, so it looked like this. This is private property. Keep out. Mama dropped her stuff right off the porch and into the bushes. 
blankets, and everything, and pillows. Then she sat down on the rickety steps and hollered out a bunch of cuss words that echoed through the woods. Uh, Toby got all blubbery, but I just stood there looking at the boarded up door. I was surprised how bad I felt, seeing as how I hated that house, but I guess it had been better than the car after all. I watched the back of Mama's head, and I could almost see her sadness swirling around her. It's a good thing you made us take our stuff out of there every day, I said. She just stared out at the woods. Toby was whimpering and pulling the blankets up out of the bushes. That would have been awful if our stuff was locked up in there, I said. Mama just kept staring out into the woods. I guess Beverly Jenkins was wrong about this house, I said. I guess the owner doesn't want us here after all. Mama turned her head slowly and looked at me, and her face didn't show anything. Not mad, not sad, not anything. Then she stood up and gathered the rest of the blankets and stuff. Come on, y'all, she said. Me and Toby followed her out to the car and climbed in. As we made our way back up to the gravel road toward the highway, I hummed a little bit, trying to clear the heavy air in the car. Georgina, please, Mama said, so I hushed up. I stared out at the world passing by my window, and I made up my mind. I was definitely going to steal that dog.